Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakorash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of His only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of you so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad that may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but our Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the whole for the elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch on Des Moines. Now you will coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit, Habakkuk And um, this lesson is going to be a response to uh, the Elder Yashawamba's lesson. Um, that's you see on the screen here. Uh, this page is Remnant Save 144, entitled uh, Fopi Equals Pure Black Confusion. All right. And um, in this clip, you know, you can go back and uh, listen to all that what was said. But uh, you, you see um, these men are right, still having that old man all right, proclaim them, proclaim themselves to be uh, leaders. Right. Supposed to be the leaders of Israel. All right. Phobia is supposed to stand for um, for our people's um, edification. Right. But all you hear is carnal madness, man. Are right, you got one leader boasting about. Um, riding around with another man's uh, uh, another man's wife, all right, and playing with her kitty in a hit in a Hellcat, all types of madness, man. Talking about how it, he'll, oh, I can't remember exactly who said this part, but um, about how he'll beat 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 somebody's ass in front of uh, his children and in front of his wife and shit like that, man. Hey, that's not a good look, all right. And for all those, and we know that ultimately, man, these niggas are. That's they lot, all right, to be niggas, whatever the case may be. But for the sincere believers, all right, we have to be putting away that old man because niggas like this are going to die. All right, and the Lord is allowing these things to be manifest and, and put to the forefront because the Lord is about to bring in a swift or right, a swift judgment upon these uh, these leaders, man. OK, but let's start this off with in the book of James, the first chapter. This is James chapter one, verse twenty one. It says, uh, wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Right now, when we go into that phrase superfluity, it says what? Getting to the point, it says residue remains the wickedness remaining over in a Christian from his state prior to conversion. Right now, joking around about uh, playing with another man's wife or adultery. That's not something that uh, a man or the Lord should be doing, all right, or talking about, all right? As if that's something that's funny. And then you got the rest of the panel, everybody laughing. You only had one nigga that had, the only thing he could say was, whoa, and that's it, man, all right? These are men that are carnal-minded, man. These are men that are going to lead the, their con themselves and, them, uh, and their congregations uh, to destruction, man, all right? It says, um, it says Re residue remains the wickedness remaining over in a Christian Christian from his state prior to conversion. So as we're in this walk, we should be killing as we're in this walk. We should be constantly killing off that old man, those old thoughts. All right. See, back in the world, Jake might have boasted about, man, I'll take a nigga bitch and this and that and the third and X, Y and Z. Right. But coming in this faith, man, that's 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 filthy, man. All right. Hey, the scriptures say in the book of Sirach. Let's hit this real quick. Sirach, the 14th chapter. <clears throat> See, these things should be hated, man. All right, Sirach chapter 14 and verse, uh, let me see. So, like, it might be the 17th chapter. Mm. Let me just type it in. All right, this is Sirach chapter 17 and verse, uh, um, 26. It says, turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity. For he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health and hate thou abomination vehemently. So that's an abomination in the sight of the Lord, man. All right. So us, we should have that mindset to hate those things as, as well, man. Not boasting in it. All right. As if it's uh, something funny to play around with, man. But once again, these are the leaders that our people have chosen, man. Because at the end of the day, man. All right. Our people, uh, our people love it. OK, they love the drama. All right, they love hopping on these uh, uh these different um platforms and listen to these uh, Israelites go back and forth. All right, like a big ass soap opera, man, or as if this is some entertainment, man. 
So all these people that have not been hearkening to the voice of the Lord, not have actually been putting off that old man and correcting themselves, it's being revealed what manner of man they are, right? And the judgment is about to come in swift, man. This is the book of um, Ephesians chapter 4. And um, we'll start at verse 17. Ephesians 4 and 17, it says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. So there should be a separation between us and the rest of our people in the way that they reason, the way that they think, man. Okay? You can't decipher these niggas from a, 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 a damn rapper in the world, man. All right? On a damn track, boasting about adultery and, and this and that and the third, man. Boasting about what he got. I got a Hellcat and I'm riding around and this and that and the third like a damn music video, man. This is not what uh, uh, what this ministry is about, all right? You can't mix this ministry with the mindset of the world, all right? You can't put a, a new wine into an old bottle, man, okay? We have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, man. It says, um, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of the Most High through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. And these men are showing themselves to still be uh, blind, man. Okay? Look at how these men were talking to one another, man. I couldn't even imagine speaking to one of my brothers like that, calling him a whole-ass, bitch-ass nigga. And this and that in the third, man. No reverence for one another. No true love towards one another. I'll beat your ass in front of your children and, and your wife and this and that in the third, man. What kind of madness is that, man? But once again, like the elder had, uh, the elder Yashawamba had said, or pretty much roughly paraphrasing what he had said, man, you know, we get mad at these things, but this is their lot, all right? That's, this is their lot, okay? This is the uh, the prophet of the carnal man, all right? The carnal man needs its prophet too, okay? These are examples of men that have the flesh, but don't have the spirit. Know that they Israelites, but you can't tell the difference, man, okay? can't tell the difference man still that old nigga in the world it says um that they were never changed man On, only thing that changes is the nigga threw on fringes and 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 stop eating pork all right but the inner man is the same nigga all right ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of the most high through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Yahweh Shai, right? So if you learned of Yahweh Shai, all right, you wouldn't be uh, boasting of these things, man. Okay? No telling what these men are uh, actually doing, man. All right? Once again, like the elder had mentioned as well, man, hey, you, you can't even imagine what these men are doing behind closed doors, man. All right? Like it talks about in uh, Ezekiel, the eighth chapter. All right, the Lord told Ezekiel, uh, look and peep through the wall. All right, and see that the leaders were serving other gods. The women were crying out to Tammuz, right? But these were heads and leaders of the people, man. Okay? But in the dark, they were doing all manners of wickedness, man. All right, and the Lord is bringing in the judgment upon all these people, all these uh, wicked leaders and their congregations as well, man. They're still following them because they've been warned. All right, these these different... um uh uh. Leaders and their congregations have been warned of the judgment to come for moving the way that they moving, man. It says, um, verse 21, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Yahweh Shai, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. All right. So you see that these men are still the old man. All right. Incorporating black culture. All right. Into this, uh, uh, uh into this word, man. That's not ought to, that ought not to be so, man. It says, uh, verse twenty three, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that and that ye put off, put on the salaki, and that ye put on the new man, which is after the Most High, is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. And you can keep reading down on this chapter, but that's pretty much the point, man. We have to become new creatures. All right. See, coming into this faith, man, we should have a mindset of repentance, all right? Being humble and meek before the Lord and begging for mercy and salvation, man, for forgiveness, all right? Because we're all condemned unless we abide in Yahweh Shai. But that's that's not these men's mindset, man. You can see there's no fear, no reverence, 
All right. No fear of the heavenly father. All right. Of his word on how to conduct themselves. All right. To not even uh, to have a mind to even repent over these things, man. Just boasting and, and, and proud, man. But anyways, let me grab this in the book of Luke. <clears throat> this is uh, Luke. Chapter eight and verse 17. It says, yep, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Right. So like our elders and apostles have been warning of following these different groups, these different men, you know, these false leaders going through precepts, showing you where they're going off. All right. How there's all they're, they're off in their character. They're off in their breakdowns and so on and so forth. Right. Been warning you of these things, man. But now it's being made manifest and brought to the forefront. For, forefront, And why is that? Because once again, the Lord is about to bring in judgment, man. The Lord is about to bring in a heavy judgment upon these different individuals, man. Look at all the prophecies that's popping off, man. We see martial laws at the door, man. What do you think is going to happen to these men? You think the Lord is going to come in and, de and defend them with this type of conduct? The way that they're acting, the way that they're speaking? You think the Lord is going uh, uh, to... He's going to uh, provide for them and keep them. No, they ass is going to be through like the rest of our wicked forefathers and the wicked prophets when judgment was coming in, man. They ass wasn't escaping, man. All right. They was getting their ass fucked up. Excuse my language, but that's just the reality of it, man. So what do you think is going to happen in this time period, man? It says uh, Luke chapter two and verse 34. It says, and Simon blessed them and said unto Mary, his mother, behold, this child, speaking of Yahweh Shai, is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And that's what we see happening, man. How many years were our elders and apostles uh, warning about uh, men like Sakari? All right. That congregation, man. Years warning. Okay. Now they talk, been preaching, talking about we ain't supposed to worship you. How was shy? All right. Look at the Passover that they had, man. You know. But it's all being made evident or right? all being made manifest, man. OK, so when the judgment comes, all Israel may fear. It says. Um, that's pretty much it on that. And I want to get one more one more precept on this topic. All right, this is uh, Matthew chapter 12, and then we're going to get into some precepts going into the judgment that's at the door, man. Matthew 12 and 33, it says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by his fruit. So we're seeing the fruit of these individuals, and we're seeing that these are corrupt trees, all right, bringing forth bad fruit, all right? So what's going to be, what's going to happen, man? They're going to be hewed down, okay? The Lord is going to judge them, man. It says... um, Verse 34, O generation of vipers, how can ye being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Right, so out of the abundance of the heart, these are the thoughts of these men, man. The mouth speaketh. So we heard what these men are laughing and jesting about and so on and so forth, right? Now, hey, if if if, if he repents, he repents, okay? <laughs> but that's that's not likely, man. We're pretty much at the end of this end of this thing, man. Hey, a lot of these guys, man been going into for uh for uh for years our elders and apostles have been speaking about for years okay these men ain't repenting man they they seared with a hot, a hot iron in their mind man all right they proud they got a little clout okay a little recognition they ain't finna let go of that to uh to to be humble and meek okay to confess their faults and repent man they don't have that mentality man they gonna re continue to remain filthy all right it says, uh, verse uh, 35, it says, a good man out of the good treasure of, of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. All right, that's all we're going to grab on that. So let's uh, jump in the book of 1 Peter 4 and 17. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 17. It says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of the Most High? That's right. So judgment is going to begin with those that know that they're Israelites, man. All right. The Lord is going to start with the ancient men. All right. These leaders. OK. Uh, Ezekiel chapter nine and verse four. It says. 
And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Now, even listening to these guys, these men ain't sighing and crying about the wickedness that's being done. All right, the wickedness of Esau, Edom, the wickedness of their own people, the wickedness of these other congregations, man, no. Okay, they're all caught up about their image, all right, being politically uh, correct, okay? So that they can maintain followers or maintain a certain image in the sight of the people, man. You know, not trying to ruffle certain feathers and so on and so forth, man. That's not this is what this is about, man. OK. We're set forth to cry aloud, spare not, lift up our voice like a trumpet and show our people their transgressions, the house of Jacob, their sins, man. We ain't supposed to assuage this message to please people or to please our own egos, whatever the case may be, man. It says uh, verse five. And to the others in that uh, Mark, in that scripture in Ezekiel 9 and 4, that's an exemption from judgment, okay? So those that are sighing and crying for all the abominations, all the wickedness, all right, they're going to what? Be exempt from the judgment to come. And to the others, he said in mine hearing, go ye after them through the city and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and began in my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. So this gruesome judgment that's coming in, the Lord is going to start with the uh, the leaders. All right. That's why it says in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the sixth chapter, this is Wisdom of Solomon six. We'll start at the top. Verse one. It says, Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand, learn ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Give ear ye that rule the people, and glory in the multitude of nations, for power is given you of the Lord, and sovereignty from the highest, who shall try your works and search out your counsels. Because being ministers of his kingdom, ye have not judged aright, nor kept the law, nor walked after the counsel of the Most High. Horribly and speedily shall he come upon you, for a sharp judgment shall be to them that be in high places. Right? So uh, a sharp judgment is going to be to these leaders, man. Okay? That's sitting on the top of these different congregations, man. It says, for mercy will soon pardon the meanest, but mighty men shall be mightily tormented. So the Lord is not a man that he should lie, man. So these men, they're, they're going to get a severe judgment to come upon them, man. Plain and simple. All right, let's end it off with the book of Sirach, the first chapter. This is Sirach chapter one. In verse uh, 29, be not an hypocrite in the sight of men and take good heed what thou speakest. Exalt not thyself, lest thou fall and bring dishonor upon thy soul. And so the most high discover thy secrets and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation. And that's what's been happening. That's what's uh, been happening, man. All right. How these men been moving, how they been operating, man, behind closed doors. All right, they how they think and reason, man. That wickedness, that filth is being put forth in the eyes of all the congregation. It says, because thou camest not in truth to the fear of the Lord, but thy heart is full of deceit. So the Lord is going to cast these individuals down, man. Plain and simple. All right, so I'm going to end it right there and give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say shalom.